Hello there, fellow battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today I bring some good news for those of you who enjoyed my recent coverage of the Impalers chapter. Not because I'm returning to them with a third video, not yet anyway, but because we shall cover another sign of Sanguinius we discussed in the past. These are the Bloodbearers. While in their first video I narrated to you about their founding and founder, today we shall give the entire chapter an overview, by going into their recruitment, doctrine, beliefs and more. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Scattered records of the Bloodbearers imply that the chapter has no set homeworld, instead functioning as a fleet-based chapter. They follow a much rarer operational strategy for the Warfleet known as the Nomad Predation Pattern. We've actually seen this before with the infamous Karkaradans chapter, among others. This allows the chapter to be an entirely sovereign force which can sustain itself without any support whatsoever. As a Nomad Predation Pattern, they can voyage indefinitely, tearing only long enough to identify and engage the foes of the Imperium. After destroying these potential threats, the fleet acquires resources from their vanquished foes. One of the Bloodbearer's preferential modes of operation is to cull potential initiates from the young of the survivors of their assaults, where practical. That is of course if the survivors are human and free of any corrupting influence of the warp. The initiates that survive are then subjected to intense hypno-conditioning and other harsh procedures designed to strip away any past loyalty and replacing it with the will and attitude of the Bloodbearers. This chapter is divided into companies of varying sizes and specializations, each one led by an officer with the equivalent rank of captain. Due to their propensity for engaging in never-ending conflicts, the Bloodbearers have often been forced to merge remnants of a depleted force into viable battle groups. When too many losses are sustained by a company, negating their ability to operate alone, they will often merge with another full-size company. New companies are also regularly created by combining a body of newly inducted scout marines with a few veterans from other companies, who will then take up the designation of one of the Dominion companies. Regardless of size, a company is divided into squads of various specializations battle line, fire support, close support and veteran. In the larger companies there is an informal hierarchy to allow the captain to focus on the overall tactical picture. Squad leaders who have displayed a talent for leadership might then be granted a title Centurion and act as the second in command to the captain. These Centurions are earmarked for possible senior command in the future and are often considered captains in training. A couple of unique specialist formations of theirs include The Malakim Also known as Messengers, they are the Lord Commander's personal honor guard. These elites stand in the Lord Commander's presence and do not operate within any of the other dominions or companies. Each one, when inducted into the ranks of the Malakim, give up their common name and take up a ritual name giving up their individual identity to do the work of the Lord Commander without any guilt or regret. They are the great angels living embodiment of wrath and retribution given physical form and purpose. It is upon these warriors that the Lord Commander depends upon to carry the most dangerous of jobs. They also stand as guardians of the chapter's flagship the Crimson Death, guarding the holes and inner sanctums from those foolish or suicidal enough to dare launch a boarding action upon them. Rarely called upon to take to the battlefield proper, even when they are finally unleashed upon the enemy they strike suddenly and violently, the wrath of the Primarch made manifest. It is for their sacrifice and indomitable resolve that the tides of many a battle have been turned from a potentially disastrous defeat into momentous victories. The second of their unique formations is known as the Angel's Tears. Honoring the Ninth Legion of the Old Times, the Bloodbearers still maintained a mysterious and deadly formation called the Angel's Tears. This is the chapter's deadly heavy weapon specialists, who serve in place of the more common fire support marines of other chapters. They are known for the cruel devastation that they bring to the enemy, each warrior bearing the title of Memitim, 
which means executioner or slayer or dead hand. They specialize in the use of weapons of mass destruction, serving as the wrath of Sanguinius set forth by the Lord Commander's will to call those he decrees unworthy of being saved. They rarely take to the field of battle, serving as agents of destruction against only those deemed worthy of annihilation. They are armed with ancient, dark forge weapons spawned out of the Dark Age of Technology, and they descend upon their foes unannounced with their jump packs, with oaths of retribution upon their lips. Just like the Malachim, whenever they assume the mantle of Memetim, the Battle Brothers will renounce their names and identities, taking one ritual name which identifies them as an angel of death. These ritual trappings stem from the teachings of the great angel himself, helping to insulate the warriors from the horrific deaths they cause. For when they eventually put aside their mask and return to the ranks of the chapter under their old name, they no longer bear the lingering taint for the slaughter and destruction caused by the mantle they once bore. As a fleet-based chapter, the Bloodbearers are able to prosecute their eternal war of vengeance against the traitors and the followers of the Dark Gods, wherever they might go. The chapter has made the Cold Void their battlefield, as the greatest sieges and defenses are in fact fought in the murderous environment of space, at least according to them. They excel in subduing their enemies in deadly ship-to-ship -ship fighting, striking like the incarnation of the great angel's wrath upon those who turn their backs on the Emperor. Their coming is nothing less than the apocalyptic judgment delivered upon the guilty from on high. In defense of star systems, the creation of kill zones and intersecting orbits are skills that the Bloodbearers excel at, as these are skills owned to a keen edge on the grindstone of thousands of battlefields over nine millennia of ceaseless warfare. To them, the methods of defending or taking a position, whether terrestrial or voidborne, are the same in principle, even if different in application. Their starships are merely fortresses of stone and metal broken free from gravity. This approach has seen the chapter become one of the preeminent masters of high-intensity void warfare among the Astartes, and peerless in the spheres of boarding assault and close-quarters ship-to-ship combat. Just like their Blood Angel progenitors, the Bloodbearers still prosecute campaigns of open domination against the worlds that rebelled against the rightful rule of the Emperor. These wars of ultimatum usually commence with the Lord Commander, or one of his consuls, affording a world just one opportunity – to lay down their weapons and embrace the will of the Emperor. It's either that or face what they call a Day of Revelation in which they shall suffer the unfettered wrath of the Bloodbearers unleashed. Many foes confronted by the Gathered Chapter's host are overcome with dread and awe, and capitulate without hesitation. However, those that do not will see the noble countenance of these Angels of Death transformed. The fury and spirit of the Avenging Angel unleashed, as blinding destruction is delivered in a hail of bolter and blades, Operating almost exclusively as a rapid strike force, the tactical doctrine of the chapter is focused heavily upon the use of powerful shock assaults, close quarters combat, and above all else the brutal application of focused and overwhelming power to shatter the enemy's resistance in a single blow. Like other chapters of the blood, they eschew the use of defensive warfare or long-range firefights as indecisive and unfitting. Despite personal misgivings, they will not hesitate to utilize a sustained orbital bombardment to soften up a particularly difficult target. This is then followed up by a large-scale dropout assault, augmented by a large element of close air support. This allows the chapter's assault elements to press the attack to the hilt. Once fully committed, they attack the enemy's vitals, endeavoring to cause as much death and destruction as quickly as possible. Relishing close quarters fighting, the Bloodbearers either attack with point-blank weapon fire or in melee combat. They look upon the Codex Astartes as the foundation of their way of life, but to follow its teachings literally without consideration for what they have already learned and what they observe around them is not, in their view, wisdom, but blind orthodoxy. To believe in rigid dogma is a weakness of the mind and it is this very weakness which has caused so much stagnation in the wider Imperium. The Bloodbearers feel that to be bound by words set down an age ago is to risk failure to adapt to changing circumstances which could in turn prove fatal to the chapter. 
Their main adaptation from the doctrines are all intended to grant the chapter extra flexibility in keeping up with their duty as constant crusaders. Despite their fierce independence and bellicose nature, they still venerate their gene father as all other scions of Sanguinius do, for their oaths of allegiance are sworn to him and then to the master of humanity. The Bloodbearers paint their power armor black, with a white chapter badge and squad markings. The shoulders of the power armor are painted dark red and the trim is gold. The aquila on the chest guard is usually gold, white or black. The chapter icon consists of a stylized white-colored armored gauntlet holding a sanguine chalice which bears the blood of their gene sire centered upon a dark red field. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Bloodbearers chapter, another scion of the Blood Angels, for today. All in all, a fairly disciplined successor chapter compared to some others, both homebrew and canon for that matter. I think both the Impalers and the Flesh Terrors are a little bit savager than these guys. There's also enough fluff on them to maybe make one final episode at some point, focused on their campaign's chronicle maybe. Anyway, what are your thoughts about them? Would you like to see a final episode on them too? What did you like or dislike most about their aspects and traits? As always, I welcome your opinions in the comments below. If you found this informative, please consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thank you for watching and the Emperor protects.